you just become a smarter and more intelligent investor by understanding the nuances of broader opportunity sets and how they interact and correlate. So I'm hoping that this interaction of the private portfolio that we host with the addition of the REIT and listed allocation will continue to improve our investment decision-making and ultimately make us a, a smarter investment product. Hello, welcome to the REIT Report. My guest today is Liz Troney, fund manager with CBRE IM's flagship global investment strategy. Liz is here to talk about the role that REITs play in CBRE's global investment strategy and about the sector more broadly. Liz, great to have you on the podcast. Hi, Sarah. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So CBRE's flagship global investment strategy began to allocate to listed REITs in December 2022, but under its mandate, it could have done so before then. I'm curious to know why it took so long to begin investing in REITs. Excellent question. The fund and strategy was actually launched back in 2010 as a new private market focused strategy. So initially the prioritization was on diversification across traditional private sector, asset classes, offices, retail, industrial were were the primary focuses at that time. A consideration to layer on listed REIT exposure before the portfolio was properly diversified in its core segment of private equity real estate wasn't really considered. Then about five years later, structural changes started to hit real estate markets and the focus, particularly around sectors, started to shift to more niche or niche specialized areas. And this private fund at the time, it was still entirely private, were early movers in many of those areas, including medical office, life science office, and student. So we were able to evolve still within the private markets in this way, but started to take on exposures that were more naturally found in in the listed market. And we actually did gain some listed re-exposure prior to 2022, but it was through a a take private transaction rather than an outright public market investment. So back in September of 2018, the funds that I work on and lead participated in the acquisition by a company called Graystar of at that time, the student housing REIT called Education Realty Trust, otherwise known as EDR. This gave us access to those sectors that are now so prominent in the REIT market. I know student has, has diminished in terms of profile within particularly the U.S. REIT market, but at the time was a prominent sector, hard to replicate in the private market. So accessing the management and the assets and the portfolio that were available in the listed market was our route. So in essence, the steps to get to where we are today, which was the first pure play, if you like, allocation to listed real estate was prioritization of the core private portfolio first, then an involvement into the opportunity set of niche and specialized sectors. At that time, the portfolio started to look much more like a REIT pie chart in terms of sector diversification. And then thirdly, this dedicated public REIT, which as you mentioned, was initiated back in in December of 2022. And since that decision in December 2022, How has the flagship global investment strategy gone about cultivating its exposure to listed REITs? Another excellent question, probably the first one that that is often asked is, are you choosing from your vantage point to, meaning from a predominantly private fund, looking at the REIT market? Are you looking at a diversified exposure to complement your private portfolio? Are you looking to more specifically complement the private exposures with more concentrated positions, whether that's large stakes in single companies or a smaller selection, a more concentrated selection of stocks. We actually took to the committee for approval both. We asked for approval to, in time, do both a fully diversified strategy and complement that with what's called a completion strategy later on. To date, since December 2022, we have entirely invested in a actively managed but broadly diversified strategy. We have not activated that completion strategy yet. But we are actually in real time reviewing it here in in the first quarter of 2024, the adding on of a completion strategy, which would unlock opportunities in those specialty sectors. And in fact, that completion strategy would be exclusive of traditional sectors. So exclusive of office, exclusive of retail, exclusive of industrial. And given your focus primarily on private real estate investments, were there any obstacles internally or operationally in terms of increasing your REIT allocation? There were definitely things to consider for sure. And I suppose that's the same for any new investment, but in particular with respect to adding public markets to private, the first was, is the investment philosophy aligned? And so there were questions around the overall investment 
philosophy of the re manager that we ultimately selected and ensuring that complemented the existing portfolios strategy. That was probably number one. Number two was around team resources. It's a, a different skill set to invest in public markets versus private. Thankfully, CBRE has a successful public re investment team. Uh, within the business. And we did tender externally and they were included in that formal process. We ended up selecting that internal team. And that did mean we didn't need to change risk management, trading, or operation functions, in essence, to bring in a listed allocation to a predominantly private portfolio. Another interesting one is asset allocation and determining the appropriate split between public and private. That involved analysis and discussion around the the returns, of course, the volatility, sort of general portfolio construction work, and how we would in time make adjustments between public and private allocations and how we, how we would pace the investments into public markets. Of course, the pacing is available on a much quicker frequency. You can invest daily, whereas in, in private markets, sometimes windows are open only once a quarter for subscription, et cetera. So asset allocation decisions were important. And then perhaps finally around client communication and expectations. Many of the investors in the vehicle had invested in it for private market exposure predominantly. So expanding into public markets required communicating why we were doing this fairly straightforward, but why we were doing it, what the potential benefits and, and risks were, and managing those expectations. So there, there were some hurdles, if you like, or obstacles, but over time, I will say the reception to the listed allocation within the portfolio has been positive, and really the benefits that we saw and outlined to investors have now been received and, and acknowledged. So a success there. Great. And Liz, as you look ahead, is there a target balance between public and private real estate that you have in mind? That certainly surfaced uh, while we were considering this. And when it comes to determining the appropriate mix between the two, I suspect there's no one size fits all. It will depend on the specific underlying objective for the vehicle that I work on, the private, it's predominantly private portfolio. So the listed markets were capped within the strategic asset allocation at 15%. We have at the moment initiated a, a range of between two to 5% and an ability to go up to seven and a half. So taking that formal max down by half as we get started here, but no one size fits all. Our documents are focused on the private market. So it did have that cap at 15 and we're looking to grow that and have a informal cap at 7.5% or half our allocation as we get going here in this initial phase. Great. And how confident are you that listed REITs will be able to continue to perform as well as they have given all the ongoing macro challenges? Really timely question. I think if I had to summarize briefly, it would be confident, but not complacent. The markets are overwhelmingly expecting rates to fall at the moment, and, and that's a, a positive for risk assets. It is unsure when the pace of these rate cuts may come in, but what we do feel confident about is the fact that higher rates are priced into public markets in terms of the pricing levels, and they have a strong chance to outperform when the market can see the end of rising rates. And not many commentators are talking about rates going up from here. It's more the phase of rates either stabilizing or when these cuts eventually come in. So confident, but not complacent, as certainly the view on rates is, is still uncertain. The second is more about the fundamentals in the sector. We are expecting supply to drop in 2025 in particular. Uh, so there has been a, a surge in supply deliveries post-COVID and the reaction to that environment that was so severe, but there is a significant supply drop ac across most sectors. Just a year out, one of the largest supply drops we've seen on record, and that should really give way to gains in fundamentals. So that's our second point. That's a real green shoot coming through in the sector, both private and public, just in the year or so ahead. And then the third would be on relative valuations, which certainly look attractive. I know the markets are fixated on AI stocks and the tech grouping there, but there are certainly other valuable assets worthy of attention, and we are backing the view that this is an attractive time to enter listed real estate. It's probably been overlooked with the focus on other areas of the stock market. And so that third point on relative valuations for a long-term investor looking to time their entry to the extent that's possible looks very favorable. Great. And I did want to ask you about any particular segments of the listed REIT space that you're especially excited about right now. Yeah, there's segments available to us in the listed space that aren't available either efficiently 
or easily in the private space. So I, I probably focus on those areas in particular to mention ones on data center rates. So just going back to the comments on the AI and the focus on that area of, of growth and, and potential productivity enhancements for us relates to this reliance on, on cloud computing, data storage, digital services. All that has created a significant tailwind for data center reads like Equinix, for example. And as more businesses keep migrating their IT infrastructure to the cloud, we see the demand for such facilities to host this to remain strong. And that sector has been challenging for private market participants to invest in. And the REITs holds a specialist operational management expertise and also assets that are very well organized in that area. The second would be specialty housing REITs, perhaps. So as I mentioned, the portfolio had gone into areas like student housing. What we saw is quite early, but we see much more demand and requirements for purpose-built housing options for a various range of demographic needs, particularly with the aging population, the demand in, in, in developed markets, primarily the demand for specialized housing solutions, such as senior housing, skilled nursing, so REITs like Well Tower, et cetera, that focus on these niche property types could certainly benefit and have been difficult for us to source in the private markets, difficult for us to scale in the private markets, and an acknowledgement that Oftentimes, there is excellent, if not superior, operational capabilities in the public market options. Great. And Liz, any other thoughts about investing in listed REITs today that you'd like to share? I expect the growth of hybrid portfolios, if you can call us that. And I think we are one in terms of being an early mover here as a predominantly private portfolio, adding a listed allocation. And to a global fund is early in the market. We are seeing large asset owners doing this internationally, but for a regulated vehicle, a traded vehicle, we do see ourselves as being an early mover in this. And thoughts about Others wanting to do that are considerations that, that we think about. I think those that will be successful at it will play into their specific edges or their competitive advantages on both sides. And I talked to our listed group that we're working with about our longer term time horizon and that being an advantage for us. And of course, they come with an information advantage on the public markets that is superior to anything we would have in that environment. So we're playing into our specific edges there in terms of time horizon information advantages. And I was actually thinking about this just the other day in light of, of Charlie Munger, who was just a terrific investor who passed away at the end of last year. And some of the interviews around his passing mentioned his pursuit of broad domain expertise. And what he meant by that was by expanding your opportunity set, you become a smarter investor. You stay abreast of trends in different areas. You can pick up pattern recognition, what's working in one sector may be relevant for your own sector. And you just become a smarter and more intelligent investor by understanding the nuances of broader opportunity sets and how they interact and correlate. So I'm hoping that this interaction of the private portfolio that we host with the addition of the REIT and listed allocation will continue to improve our investment decision-making and ultimately make us a, a smarter investment product. Great, Liz, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Great to chat. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed this episode of the REIT Report, please subscribe or leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. 